Now I am honored to welcome Reverend Tom Nairn, OFM, Senior Director of Ethics at the Catholic Health Association of the United States of America to deliver today's commencement address. Thank you, Dr. Reed. I'd also like to thank Dr. Gervaisi and Dr. Brown and the faculty here at Quincy University for inviting me to give this address. You already know a bit about me. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees here at Quincy University. You just heard that my day job is being a health care ethicist at the Catholic Health Association of the United States. I'm also a graduate of Quincy University. I remember sitting in this same gymnasium over 40 years ago on a very hot Mother's Day with no air conditioning, wondering just how long the commencement address was going to take. <laughs> There's one other thing that you probably didn't have to be told about me. I'm a Franciscan priest. I'm a member of that order that founded Quincy University over 150 years ago. I like to tell you there's sort of a professional hazard about being a priest and asking to do things like this. Every time I'm asked to give a toast, it sounds more like a prayer than a toast. And although this is my first graduation address, I have a feeling that it's going to sound more like a sermon than an address. But one good thing about that is that my sermons are usually short and to the point. I'm going to try to follow Matt's good example and give a short address. An hour and a half later, you might not think it was short. In fact, there's only two things that I would like to say today. First of all, on this Mother's Day, I'd like to congratulate all mothers here, especially the mothers of the grads and you grads who are mothers. I want to thank you. Thank you mothers as well as you fathers, you spouses, relatives, significant friends of the graduates. It is your support that helped these women and men achieve what they have achieved today. You should be very proud of them, and you should give yourselves a pat on the back as you congratulate these graduates. Their success is your success. All of you, especially you parents and you spouses, need to be recognized, congratulated, and thanked. And all of us who are associated with Quincy University do thank you at the, from the bottom of our hearts. As I'm sure the graduates do today, I think you all deserve a round of applause. <laughs> the graduation diploma is a very nice Mother's Day gift. Now my second point addressed to you graduates. Since you've come to Quincy University, one of the words you've probably heard more than you'd ever like to hear is the word outcomes. Everything at, C at University, uh, Quincy University deals with outcomes. Not what teachers teach, but what students learn. Even us members of the Board of Trustees are constantly worried about outcomes. We're constantly asking Dr. Gervaisi or Dr. Reed or sometimes even Father John, Doctor, what are the outcomes of, the of Quincy University and are those outcomes where they're supposed to be? But I think it's at graduation time that we realize that you graduates are the true outcome of the work of QU. The success of each and every one of you 
is the success of QU. And we're excited for you, and all of us on this podium want you very much to succeed. But that sort of begs the question, what does success mean for a graduate of QU? Is it getting your first choice of grad schools? Is it getting a high-paying job? Is it getting just any job today? To be honest, yes, that's part of what success means, but that's only a part. Dr. Reed told you that I'm an ethicist. That's an easy word to say, isn't it? Ethicist. Often we ethicists are seen as people that tell other people what they can do, or more often tell other people what they can't do. But that's not what ethics is really about. Ethics is simply how we live our lives, and live our lives with integrity, of being true to the values that we say we hold. And I would like to suggest to you that the real success is being true to those values that we say we hold. If you learned anything at Quincy University, I hope that you are now convinced about the values that have been part of your experience here these past four, or as Matt said, five or six or seven years. I hope you continue to remember the values enshrined in Father John Doctor's talks about the tower, the hawk, the Tau Cross. The QU Tower challenges you and will continue to challenge you to look beyond your horizons, to be open to constant and continued growth after you leave here. The Quincy Hawk, that symbol of vision, of strength, of courage, of decisiveness, still needs to guide you. And the cross, the sign of God's love and mercy, needs to call us, all of us, to be reconcilers and to be of service to others, and as graduates of a Franciscan school, of service to all creation. That you continue to hold those values, that is how QU measures a successful outcome. But as you leave here today, it's unlikely that many of you will be able to see the QU Tower. And you probably won't be looking every morning at the QU Hawk. Although I do hope you look at the cross from time to time. And so I'd like to leave you with just one phrase. A phrase that I think sums up all of those values that are associated with Quincy University. And you can find those words in the writings of St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Franciscan Order. He used a short phrase to describe what he thought success really means. And that phrase is, who I am before God. That's who I am and nothing more. Who I am before God. That's who I am, and nothing more. It took a while for Francis to understand the meaning of those words. As a young person, he was overly concerned about success. In his young 20s, he surprised, surprised his friends and really exacerbated his parents with his attempts to succeed. He was going to be the center of attention. He was going to be the leader of the youth of his day. He was going to be the life of every party that Assisi has. He was going to be the warrior knight. 
But he came also to become a repairer of churches. I guess that was the 1200s version of service learning. He became a hermit. Finally, he became the founder of the Franciscan Order. And I could imagine his parents wondering, is this young guy ever going to grow up? Is he ever going to take on responsibilities? Not sure of what the future was going to hold, it seemed that Francis wanted to remain open to every single possibility. Many of you grads might be like him today, wondering about what the future is going to hold for you. But probably a lot other of you grads are going to be like his parents. You know where you're going, you just need this degree to get there to become a success. And you say, let's just get on with it. Eventually, Francis did realize what success was. He realized that the only thing that mattered was who I am before God. And I'd like to suggest to all of you, not only grads, but all of us here, whether we're Catholic or not, whether we're Christians or not, whether we're believers or not, that that's the only thing that matters. Who we are before God, or who we really are at the depths of our heart, that's the only measure of success. Success doesn't come from school. Success doesn't come from our job. It comes from our hearts. It comes from being committed to something that is truly greater than we are. It's hard for me to believe, but it's over 40 years that I was sitting where you grads are today. This gym looked a whole lot worse then than it does now, and it had no air conditioning on a hot May afternoon. And I remember listening to the graduation address then given by electronics wizard, Mr. Gates. We didn't have Bill Gates. We had Parker Gates of Quincy, Illinois. Parker Gates was a true pioneer in the field of electronics. Now, I don't know if my fellow trustees sitting on this stage who graduated with me remember either him or the talk he gave. The only part of his talk that I remember is that he told us, and remember we were a group of young people in the early 70s, the group that coined the term don't trust anybody over 30. He told us that as we graduated, as we moved the tassel from one side of our caps to the other, we were crossing the generation gap. I remember that 40 plus years later. Now, I don't expect any of you to remember my name, but if you want to write it down, it's Nairn, N-A-I-R-N, Nairn, remember that, you won't. But I do hope you remember one thing if you're going to be true to yourselves and true to Quincy, and that's that one phrase, who we are before God, who we are in the very deepest part of our being, that's who we are, and nothing more. I honestly believe, graduates, that if you forget that, you've sold yourselves and you've sold Quincy University short. But if you remember that, if you remember that one short phrase, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter what job you get, each and every one of you will be a success and your time here in Quincy will have been a success. That's all I have to say. Congratulations, graduates. Remember that you are from now on always a part of Quincy University and may God bless you always.